To build an aesthetic and strong physique, chest training is key. But many people struggle with properly training their chest. It is not always clear what a balanced chest workout looks like and sometimes you may even struggle with feeling your chest during training. In this video, I will share three science-based movement patterns that you can include in your chest workouts to get the best results possible. The movement patterns are a decline or flat press, an incline press and chest flies. Per movement pattern, I will discuss different exercise options that you can use and at the end of the video, I will share an example chest workout that you can put into practice. But first, let's look into the main functions of your chest muscles. The main muscle we are looking to train to develop your chest is the pectoralis major. The pec major has two heads, the sternocostal or lower head and the clavicular or upper head. Both heads of the pec train horizontal shoulder adduction. This occurs when you move your upper arm towards and across your body. The upper head of your pec major also contributes to shoulder flexion, which occurs when you raise your upper arm to the front. Knowing this, we can come up with ideas on how you can train different areas of your chest with different exercises. Let's start by discussing the first movement pattern, which is a flat or decline press. A flat bench press trains your chest via shoulder adduction. During the bench press, your upper arm moves towards your body. During a flat bench press, the resistance moves mostly in line with the lower fibers of your chest. This is even more so the case with the decline bench press. For this reason, include a flat or decline press into your workout to cover the lower area of your chest. But there are multiple options here. For instance, will you use dumbbells or barbells when it comes to the flat or decline press? If we look at the research, there do not seem to be great differences between the barbell and dumbbell bench press. The dumbbell bench press has the benefit that you can train each arm individually which helps with preventing muscle imbalances, whereas the barbell has the benefit that both arms work at the same time so you can arguably overload your chest muscles more effectively. But in terms of chest activation, both exercises are similarly effective. So I suggest you use the flat bench press variation that suits you best and you can make the most long-term progress with. Beginner trainees can also use push-up variations to train the horizontal press movement pattern. Since the horizontal or decline press will usually be the first exercise in your chest workout, you can start it off pretty heavy at a rep range of around 5 to 10 reps. Just make sure you are warmed up properly before jumping into heavy bench pressing. Now that we have covered the lower area of your pec major, it is time to focus a bit more on the upper area of your chest. And we can do this by incorporating the second movement pattern of this video, an incline press. As mentioned earlier, the clavicular head of your pecs also assists in shoulder flexion. During the incline press, you train the chest while your shoulders in a somewhat flexed position. This helps explain why research shows that incline pressing results in more upper pec activation. While doing the incline press, make sure your bench is between 30 and 45 degrees. Research found this to be an appropriate angle for training your upper chest region. If you decided to use barbells with the flat bench press, then I suggest you use dumbbells here on the incline press, because there are benefits to using both barbells and dumbbells, mixing them up in your chest exercises may help you make better long-term progress. For beginner trainees that want to train their chest using push-ups, you can mimic an incline press by doing feet elevated push-ups. Now, a common issue people have with the incline press or chest training in general is that they don't really feel their chest work. And this may be because they are too focused on pushing the weight up rather than getting their arm towards their body. As you can see on the left side of the screen, here I am only pushing the weight up. But on the right side, I am actively moving the upper arm towards my body. With the form on the right side, you'll feel your chest muscles train much harder. With the incline press, I suggest a slightly higher rep range between 8 to 12 reps. The third and final movement pattern for training your chest is the cable fly. A cable fly is a great way to add extra volume on your chest training because it trains your chest through a greater range of motion. During a bench press, when your arms are extended, your chest is only partially shortened. To shorten the pecs more, you also want your upper arm to come across the body, and this is where cable chest flies add their value. With a cable chest fly, you can isolate the main functions of your pec muscles and add more overall volume to your chest training. As with the bench press, there are different fly variations that you can use. You can do high to low and low to high cable flies. 
Which one you should use will depend on your training goal. Low to high cable flies involve more shoulder flexion, so this will focus more on training your upper pecs. With high to low cable flies, the resistance runs more in line with your lower pecs. If you don't have a clear preference for which part of your chest you'd like to focus on, you can also do cable flies with the cable at chest height. Since the cable fly is mostly an isolation exercise, I suggest a rep range of around 10 to 12 reps. So to sum up, you will have an effective chest workout if you include a horizontal push, an incline push and cable fly exercise into your routine. If we take the example of someone training their chest via a push day, their workout could look something like this. There is a horizontal push exercise, an incline push exercise and a cable fly at appropriate rep ranges. This workout includes 10 total sets of chest training. As discussed in my previous video on training volume, you can aim to train the chest with anywhere between 10 to 20 sets per week as a starting point. And that is all for this video. I hope it is now more clear how you can train for improved chest development. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Also leave me a thumbs up if you found this video helpful. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. And I'll see you in the next video.